shall overcome one day. The discussion over the rights of African Americans has been a long debated topic in the United States. One of the earliest and greatest moments in civil rights history took place in 1863 when President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing the slaves in the rebel states during the Civil War, followed by the passing of the 13th Amendment in 1865, abolishing slavery in all states. Unfortunately, this did not end the strife of millions of African Americans. Civil rights would go through many ups and downs in the 19th century, ultimately ending with laws passed upholding the idea of separate but equal and other racist legislation. It would not be until the mid-20th century that a movement to change the way people treated blacks came about and had lasting effects. In 1951, segregation, or the separation of blacks and whites in public venues, was in full effect. It was at this time when seven-year-old Linda Brown from Topeka, Kansas, was forced to walk to a school for blacks only, which was further from her home than the white school. Seeing this as an injustice and believing Linda should be allowed to go to school that was close to her home, Brown's family sued the Board of Education, which made its way up to the Supreme Court of the United States in 1954. It was here where the Supreme Court overturned many 19th century rulings, including Plessy v. Ferguson, the court case that stated separate was equal. Brown v. Board of Ed stated that separate was not equal and that schools needed to integrate in order to be equal. The problem with this ruling was that the Supreme Court did not give a time frame as to when schools needed to integrate. This was the first major decision in favor of civil rights in decades. The Brown family's lawyer, Thurgood Marshall, would eventually serve as the first black U.S. Supreme Court justice. While a court case brought about change, a horrific tragedy would bring the civil rights movement to full media attention. In 1955, 14-year-old Emmett Till from Chicago went down to Mississippi to spend the summer with his family. While he was there, a white woman accused him of whistling at her, an action that was considered very taboo in that part of the country. The reports of what actually happened are still unclear. It is uncertain if he had a lisp that sounded like a whistle, or if he said something to the effect of, hey baby, to the clerk. The woman wound up going home and telling her husband about the incident. Infuriated by this, the woman's husband and brother-in-law found Emmett Till, beat and killed him, and dumped his body in the river. Till's body was recovered from the river three days later and was almost unrecognizable due to the beating from the men and the bloating from the river. Till's body was sent back to his mother for his funeral. His mother chose to have an open casket despite the mutilation of his body as a means to show the world what segregationists were capable of. This proved to be a learning experience for northerners as they were not used to this. However, southerners were used to stories like these. Given all the media attention, people began to question racism in the country and began to voice their opposition to the way blacks were being treated. Shall be free, Lord, one day. 